welcome to another episode of the Next Bite of Life podcast. This is going to be a really nice one today. I've got Dr. Nadine White with me. And I got to tell you, even reading some of the stuff that she's done, <laughs> it makes me tired. I'm like, <laughs> hi, Nadine. Welcome to the show. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> you know, I'm looking up and I go, I've known you for a few years now. Yes. And, you know, I go, okay, this woman is like superwoman. She's no, like no. a pediatrician during the day or during the night. <laughs> right. She, she writes travel guides on wine. I mean, she's a luxury blogger at the sophisticatedlife.com. She's oh, a wine okay. enthusiast. She's an Oprah ambassador. I mean, like, where do you get the energy? Where, where, where? Oh, Give me some my of the. <laughs> my husband would call me just like a, a busy body. I'm obviously good at multitasking. I will say that. But yeah, I like to stay busy, like to keep busy. So I just, um, yeah, tackle each thing on my to-do list each day. So wow. yeah, it's, it's, I love everything that I do. Yeah. And so that's what makes it easy you know, oh, in a way great. is that I have like a real passion for everything that I, that I choose to do. And I'm fortunate that I can choose what I want to do um, in terms of my career at this point and doing the blog. And I just pick the things that I know that I'm going to be passionate about and enjoy working on. And so far it's, you know, besides obviously the pandemic, um, it's been a good year in terms of keeping busy and being creative. So yeah, yeah, Fantastic. just I, I love it all. Yeah, I'm gonna break it down little by little now. Sure, okay, sure. So, <laughs> so I know you were born in New York, right? I was. I was born in New York. My family, uh, my parents were Jamaican immigrants, actually. So I didn't Yay. stay very long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't stay in New York very long. I went to live in Jamaica with my grandparents until I was ten, and so I flew back and forth between. New York, Florida, and Jamaica pretty much the first, uh, actually most of my, my life until I went to college. Oh, but, so is that where you got the bug for travel? Yeah. You know, I mean, I tell people I've been traveling since I was six weeks old, um, but my mother was like a very big traveler. So besides coming to the U.S. in her 20s, she just loved to travel everywhere internationally. So growing yeah. up, I would have, she would fly and go to Budapest and come back mm -hmm. or Greece. I mean, you name it. She'd been everywhere, Australia, um, Asia. So I grew up hearing her stories and she would bring me gifts back from those particular countries. And she was extremely intelligent, like a history buff. She spoke three languages. And so, you know, I was really inspired by all that um, growing up. And she, she definitely put that love of travel into me. So That's great. My mom yeah. was the same way. I mean, it's Aww. it's nice to have like women that grow up. I she she went everywhere, and I was oh, just like, oh, incredible. A lot of times, like I wasn't boarding school, and coming back on vacation, it would be my grandparents there because my parents were like off somewhere. <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it was great. I mean, what a yeah. wonderful way to grow up. You you're exposed to to places that you never knew existed, yeah. and so you know it kind of like it grows up with you and you can't wait to start doing it yourself, right? Yes, absolutely. And every time I go um, somewhere that my mom would like rave about mm -hmm. and I finally would get there, like a few years ago, I went to Thailand yeah. and she, oh, she had like these three places she always said she wanted to go back to. Uh -huh. um, and she, cause she loved Thailand. She loved Australia and she loved Greece. So she would talk about those three places a lot. And so I find I've made it to all of them, but I just Great. made it to Thailand a few years ago. And I always feel like I have, a, I'm bringing a part of her with me, you yeah. know, when I travel. So it's, it's That's really so cool. Like, mom, I made it. Yeah, exactly. You know? yes. <laughs> so she's looking down going, good. That's exactly what yes. I wanted for you. Right. <laughs> That's exactly right. And people think I travel a lot and I'm like, let me tell you, going through my mother's passports, um, she it's... passed away, unfortunately, 20, 2011. Mm -hmm. um but going through her passports i'm like i have a long way to go yeah to catch up to what she's done <laughs> much to my husband's dismay i know like, really oh, <laughs> there's still so many places to go <laughs> i know it's like that list just keeps going longer yes. and longer and longer yeah so absolutely 
how did you decide to become a doctor? You're a pediatrician, like. Yeah. So when I was growing up in Jamaica, my grandmother, um, I think my grandmother actually had aspirations to be a doctor. And then, um, you know, things just didn't work out in Jamaica in terms of Mm -hmm. finances and so forth. And so then she thought my mother was going to do it. My mother actually wanted to do more like engineering. I think if she'd grown up in America, she would have worked for NASA or something like Mm -hmm. that. Um, and so then she put that kind of dream on me. <laughs> so, and I know you being, you know, Nigerian, you're used Ex- to this, like, Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> oh my, you're going to be successful. And this is what you're going to do. Uh-huh. And this is what's going to happen. Yes. And so she just kind of pounded that into me when I was growing up. And I always ended up telling her that she was lucky because I ended up, I actually liked it. Like there was a time oh. in college, I started to think about law. Yeah. And she was like, oh, no, no, you can't do law. You can't do law. <laughs> I mean, you know, and my parents were telling me to do whatever I wanted, which was great. Yeah. But my grandmother was like, oh, no, you you are going to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so I so actually grandma knows best. Up, yeah. I was like, OK, I guess so. But I ended up really, really loving it. And um, I just couldn't see myself doing anything else in the end. So. Um, and even when I was in medical school and I wasn't sure what type of doctor I was going to be, she was like, no, 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 you should be a pediatrician. You wow. love kids. You love babies. Yeah. So, and what our pediatrician in Jamaica was a close family friend. And I spent okay. a lot of time at her office playing with the kids and trying to entertain them when they were there. And so it ended up that I chose pediatrics. So wow. <laughs> yeah, my grandmother got everything she wanted. And, exactly. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, I, I really, I never really considered seriously any other profession or career, um, but she was a big reason for that. So Fantastic. yeah, I've been practicing. I finished residency in 1999. So I've been practicing wow. over 20 years. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and I still, I still enjoy it. There's a lot of my friends who have left clinical medicine for yeah. good reason. Um, I was just about to say, oh <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other topic right there. I could spend what? like hours talking about it, why it sucks, yeah. but you know, yes. and, you I know, don't believe them at all. Um, pharmacy school my cousin oh. that lives with us she's in her last year oh the poor school. girl <laughs> <laughs> i should have you guys talk at some point i'm yeah. telling you i don't miss that world at oh, all <laughs> i can imagine yeah it's it's getting tougher and tougher and it's harder to even speak to people who want to pursue this this career yeah. path um yeah. you know i tell the residents or not residents but like students that are interested if you can't mm-hmm. see yourself doing anything else like it's not about the money. It's not about prestige. It's not about anything. Like you just want to take care of patients and you love medicine and you love science, then do it. If it's for mm-hmm. any of the other things that you think come along with it. Exactly. Forget about for it. You. Yeah. It, it's, it's not. So for me working, I work night shifts at a children's hospital here in Atlanta. And so I don't have to, thank goodness, deal with a lot of the administrative stuff and, yeah. you know, I can focus in when I'm at work on seeing patients and taking care of patients. And so for me right now, even though it's tough working nights, it, it works out for what my, my passion is in terms of strictly focusing on patients. That's um, fantastic. So I enjoy that. Yeah. And it gives me lots of time to travel. Yeah. So, <laughs> when, I, when we were traveling, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's so funny that you said that, that for oh. you, it's better to work the night shift because I actually found it the other way around. Like in pharmacy, I like working the day shift because if you work the night shift, then you were stuck with doing all the other stuff. So, oh, you know, because funny. obviously it wasn't very busy, you had to stock the shelves oh, and do all those things. And I worked at a 24 hour store, so it was just easy to come in, do my shift, and just just leave. You know? I leave. I can see that. Oh, that's and, interesting. Yeah, because it got really like I started out doing like HIV and oncology specific. Wow. Um, wow. And then we kind of shifted into the chain mode after I moved to Houston and I went back to to you know retail pharmacy and I just couldn't handle you know the whole BS that comes with the corporate mm-hmm. stuff. Right. So yes, I, I yes. kind of like the fact that you know you have your days free and you can do your nine and just and just do your shift and live. It, it sounds yes. like you have the you have the best way of dealing with it there. Yes, no, absolutely. And I've actually we work twelve hour shifts, 
And uh-huh. so I can kind of like pile my shifts up together if I want yeah. time off that month. So actually right now I'm off this whole week because I was supposed to be in Jamaica. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I have all these blocks of time that I was supposed to be traveling through June that now I'll be home. Yeah. Um, but I keep like pretty busy with, with blog things, which is great. But yeah, my job has definitely had a lot of flexibility in allowing me um, to travel. So That's right great. now it's, yeah, it's, it's a keeper. Yeah. <laughs> right now it's a keeper. <laughs> For I'm going to mention your blog one more time. It's called The Sophisticated Life. And yeah. you're a luxury blogger. I mean. Yeah. If I tell people affordable luxury since. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not spending ten thousand dollars a night at a, on a four season suite. So and there's no reason uh, to anyway. And there's no reason to. <laughs> I'm, so I'm but, not going to boast about it either. Yes, yes. I tell if there are people like looking for that in particular, that's probably not me. Exactly. But yeah, I like to stay in nice hotels and I like to do nice experiences in terms of food and wine. And yeah, so in that sense, that is so, that, so that you're saying that. There's no backpacking for you? <laughs> no, no hostels, no backpacking. No, I've been so disappointed. Even when I think to myself, we went on a cruise actually right before this started in January. Yeah. And uh, we were only staying in San Juan for one night before we left for the cruise. And mm-hmm. I won't name the hotel, but let's just say it's not it, it's not luxury. I mean, it's just a moderate hotel just yeah. near the port. And I said to my husband, it's fine. It's only one night. I don't want to spend tons of money on just one night, you know, before yeah. a cruise. Oh, my gosh. I, I just was like, I can't. This is, I can't do this. <laughs> I was like so <laughs> disgusted just staying there one night. So, no, yeah, I really do do a lot of research on hotels. I read a lot of reviews. And, um, yeah, I, I like to stay in, in nice places. And for me, even like with flying, If I get upgraded um, on my flight, that's great. I don't usually pay for upgrades unless it's like a ultra long haul flight. And so I would prefer to even put my money into the hotel where I'm going to be versus like first, you know, paying for first class. So it just depends on, you know, what your preferences are. But I prefer to to use up that money on the hotel and on the dining experiences and excursions. Yeah. So that that's my thing when I travel. Me too. I yes, we both food. love food. <laughs> food and wine. Yes. So this yes. is the this is things that you can find on your blog. You talk a lot yes. about food and you love wine and yeah. actually reminds me that you have a couple of guidebooks on Yes, on, on Amazon. Book. Yeah, so I wrote three travel uh, books last year that uh, became bestsellers on Amazon. So one is a collection of my travel guides. So um, the travel guide section of my blog goes over, you know, I know a lot of people don't have like a month to spend in one place, you know, if you're, if you work or so forth. So if you're going to Paris for a week and you want to know what the best places are to go to visit, to Mm -hmm. eat, to drink activities. And so I kind of break that down um, in most of my travel guides, where to stay, what to do, where to eat. And so that one ebook is a collection of those travel guides. The other ebook is more specific to food and wine. So if you're in Cape Town and you want to do a day trip to Stellenbosch, this is how you go about it. If you want to visit Champagne when you're in Paris, this is how you go about it. Um, And so, or like the food guides, I wrote one uh, last year just on Amsterdam. I was really impressed with the diversity of cuisines in Amsterdam. I had no idea what to expect. So I write all about the traditional local foods, restaurants, where you should go. Um, and then the third ebook was about a wine guide. So I started with, I wanted to write about like all the major wine regions in the world, at least the ones I've visited, but it was yeah. just, it was going to be too much. So I started yeah. with a uh, USA wine guide. Because uh-huh. I don't think people realize just how many wine regions are here in the U.S. I know. Um, people think just Napa and that's it. But exactly. it's not just Napa, is it? No, it isn't. And I've been making an effort every year to go to new ones. Uh-huh. And so, like, last year I did the Monticello Wine Trail in um, Charlottesville because I went to college there. So Central Virginia is making great wines. Um, the year before, I went to Finger Lakes, New York, which is ranked pretty regularly. It's now, like, the top wine destination in the wow. u.s even sometimes beating out napa 
So wow. yeah, so th that one, <laughs> that yeah, <laughs> it is. I think it's because, well, more like affordability and approachability. Yeah. I think and besides the fact that they, I mean, the wines are great. They make a lot of Riesling wines there. Um, so yeah, I definitely make an effort to visit new want new places and that, so that book was a uh, USA wine guide. So for people who may not be like wine enthusiasts, but they enjoy wine and they're going to mm -hmm. be in Texas. Well, Texas Hill country actually. Oh yes. A lot of wine. Yeah. So it's just kind of good, I think, for people to know what each region is known for so they can maybe try that wine there if they're traveling there. Um, yeah. And so that book was to kind of encourage that. So, yeah, I hope to write some more, especially, like I said, about some of the international wine. If I travel anywhere and there's a wine region within three hours of it, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> it may be a really, really long day. Like when we went to Sydney uh in 2018 i went to hunter valley and mm -hmm. i did a day trip but there was so much traffic it took like three and a half hours going and three and a half hours coming back and that was a day trip so it that was, was so pretty worth it. It's a, yeah it was pretty exhausting but i was like hey i've been to hunter valley and it's Thank the you. oldest wine region in, in australia so um yes yeah, so i definitely incorporate all the food and all the the wine with my travels and Hopefully we'll write a few more ebooks about all that. So that's fantastic. Yeah, definitely so how, try and hit people to that. How did the blog come about? I mean, how do you go from being a physician <laughs> and then saying, right. you know what, I'm going to be a blogger? Like, how did that happen? I know. And what's crazy is when I started, it, I actually didn't even know I was writing a blog per se. Mm -hmm. um, after my mom passed away, I was living in Florida. I was single. Uh, my job was extremely stressful. And so the only um, escape I ever had was when I would travel. Okay. And so I came up with this idea at first to actually have like a website that was like a magazine, like I called it a webzine, where mm -hmm. we had different categories. And I asked because, well, you know, most of my friends enjoyed all the same things I did, going to yeah. the museums and the theater and all that. And so it was supposed to be like everybody contributing quarterly mm -hmm. to this magazine, ba yeah. basically online. And you know how that goes. It's tough keeping up with that. Um, <laughs> so I just changed it into my own blog. And a few people um, connected me with groups on Facebook. And because like I said, I really did. My first actual quote unquote blog was on uh, Blogspot and it was a political blog. Okay. So back in 2008, I started writing about um, the election when okay. President Obama was running the first time. And yeah. so I went from that to trying to do this web scene, webzine, which ended up just becoming my own blog. I um, and I, I was shocked myself because if in school, give yeah. me a multiple choice exam. I don't want to write a paper. Yeah. I don't want to like do anything. I never considered myself creative in any yeah. way like that. And so it was really surprising how much I enjoyed writing about things and, you know, taking pictures and sharing that with people. So yeah. it just kind of progressed really from a, a hobby. And as the years have gone by, as you know, it, it you know kind of takes up much more of your time. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And yeah. um, so it, again, I only do it because I still enjoy it. It's not my yeah. full-time job. Yeah. Um, but because I enjoy interacting with people and I love sharing my experiences and, you know, I learn so much when I visit someplace new and then I'm excited to tell people about it. And exactly. when people say, Oh, I didn't know that. Like, I just I love it. <laughs> like A lot of people I think know. that it's joy enough, but it's not, it's more of like, right. you're so excited because you had such a great time at the, you know, in this place that you're, yeah. you want to share with people. It's not because you're like, Oh, look where I went. And I'm just like so I... much better than you and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. It's not like that. You know? No, <laughs> like, no. Kind of like, you know, like it too, you know? <laughs> right. No, I really try my best to like inspire people and answer questions that people may have um, about different places because I do you know one of the things my husband cracks up at is my itineraries because yeah. and I've, I've, I've been I know you're a big one <laughs> yes. you're big on that I am my friends appreciate it I think more than he does because he's more of a go by go on you know by the flow traveler yeah so me. I, <laughs> but, right and I, I'm trying I definitely think I've gotten better the past few years but i think what happens is i do so much research on a place yeah. before i go i love reading about everything about that place and yeah. so i end up coming up with a list of places i want to see there or things i want to do there 
and it kind of becomes cumbersome sometimes because yeah. I very try to hit all those those things. So I've I've eased up a bit. I usually pick maybe if it's a week we're going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. I usually pick like maybe three things that I really want to do. And yeah. then anything else that we do is like bonus, but exactly. there's usually at least three things that I'm like, okay, I have to yeah. see this or eat here or do this and everything else we can just figure out. That's, so, I think um, that's the best way to do it, you know, cause yeah. when I get there, I'm just like, cause you never know how you're going to feel when you even get there. Yeah, so I'm like, true. I do, my, I look, I look at what the place offers and I think, okay, I want to go to that museum and that's it. Yep. You know, and then I'm like, <laughs> wake up and he's like, what are we going to do? I'm like, ah, and then I get out, you know, and look at Google. I'm like, let's see. Oh, sometimes we right. just go down to the desk and say, hey, what do you got? <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and I think it depends too. If you have more time in a destination, I think yeah. it's, you know, you get to be a little bit more flexible. I try not to do too many just like long weekend trips anymore. Because yeah. it's too stressful. You're exhausted from traveling there. Yes. Um, unless it's like a road trip. Mm-hmm. Um, you're tired from going there. It's like I feel overwhelmed. Like, oh, there's so much I have to pack in in three days. Yes. And then, you know, you're exhausted coming back home. So I have really, like, he was just, my husband and I were just talking about because I'm doing like a Paris live thing on Thursday. Kind of just talking to people about Paris and things to do and places to go. And that was one of his favorite trips because I, it was eight days and mm-hmm. I had yeah. booked a few things cause it was our anniversary and we did like two day trips, but we had days where we just slept in. We had days where we just strolled around and sat at yeah. cafes and just people yeah. watch. And he loved that. He was yep. like, that was the perfect vacation. And That's I'm like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So are you and your husband, the same kind of traveler? <laughs> Yeah, we just, you know, we'll just go out to eat. I'm like, we just want to find out what kind of cuisine is there. Mm. We, you know, we just want to eat, drink, yes. and do nothing <laughs> for the day. And it's just great. I mean, that's just as great as going to the museums and going to this. We never take short trips either. So it's always like right. a week, two weeks, three weeks. Because, oh, so, awesome. you know, we're, we're really early retired. So it's not like we don't have an oh, agenda. I love you it. Know, so it just makes life a lot easier. It's like, oh, you know what? We didn't get to see that. Eh, we'll come back. <laughs> come back. Right, right. Yeah, no, I am. I'm learning more. And I think with age, I'm also like a little bit more tired. Like I can't, even though I have more energy on vacation, yeah. it's yeah. not like I want to be sightseeing on a tour oh, all day. Time, like yeah. I just, yeah, I I've kind of steered away from that, especially like the group tours. Like if I'm going to do yeah. something, I prefer like a private tour. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've definitely, that has changed a bit since I have uh, gotten older. I'm like, let's just relax. I want to sleep in one day and I have to get up for an all day tour. So I think people have to know themselves. And then if you're traveling with other people, definitely make some compromise in terms of things that you're going to do. So I do suggest that to people, you know, go over expectations beforehand um, and kind of have an idea what you may do and being flexible about it is all important, you know, with travel for sure. Most definitely. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So which country would you say was your favorite or which city you can pick country or, or city doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, when we uh, when I decided to start this, I'm calling it Virtual Traveler Escapes. So okay. um, the first place that popped into my mind was Paris. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people have um, differing opinions about it, but I, actually, I, I do love it. Um, I've too. been there twice, and I, I mean, I, I really love it. So, um, And the other places I'm covering are also places that I've been to either twice or spent a significant amount of time there. So I loved Thailand. Oh, mm-hmm. that's just amazing. The people there are just so <laughs> incredible, so warm. Um, the food, of course, is just incredible. <laughs> like, I think I, I know I ate Thai food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And usually when I travel, I'm looking for some comfort food or something to mix it in. No, I ate Thai food three times a day the whole time I was there. Um, love South Africa. I'd love to visit more countries in Africa, but I've been there twice and really enjoyed it. Um, loved Cuba. Cuba was really, really interesting. And those are my favorite international destinations, I would say. I loved Iceland too, actually. That was shocking to me. Yeah, um, it's shocking. 
do. And when I saw, you know, what you wrote on Facebook, I was like, uh, you know? right. Like what? I, and it, and that's one of those places I went actually on a flight deal. It wasn't, I don't usually do that. I usually look for deals for places that are on my quote unquote bucket list, but it was such a good deal. And around the, that time, people kept talking about how great it was. And let me tell you, it was gorgeous. Um, the food was amazing. It, we had great weather, thank goodness, when I went. So we got to see the Northern Lights. And it's it's somewhere I would absolutely go back to. It's like the cleanest place I've ever been. Um, <laughs> I can <do> that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was spotless. Just spotless. And, no, yeah, the, the food, everything is fresh. Like, yeah. I mean, they catch the fish, they cook it, you eat it. So. Yeah. That was amazing. Um, yeah, so that that has it really is up there. And for me, I'm not so much of an outdoorsy traveler, but I went hiking and we went down to the black sand beaches. And I mean, I, it was just all the natural beauty I was just blown away by. Um, yeah. So that that definitely is up there. Um, and so like in the US, I also try and go to new places here, like I mentioned. So I mean, California is my favorite state. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I love Jeez, from I North. Why? <laughs> oh man. And you were in LA, right? Were yeah, you in LA? For 20 years. <laughs> wow. I just I know it's expensive. I know all that stuff, but it, if I could live there, I would. And I hope one day that's where we retire to. Um I also love Arizona. I've been there now a few times and it's again just the natural beauty like Sedo- Sedona and Horseshoe yeah. Bend and Grand Canyon oh, is close enough to California so you could have the and best of both worlds really. There you go. There you go. And those are now my two I tell people those are my two favorite states. Um <laughs> Hawaii I love. I'm trying to actually get back there. I've been there twice and I'm trying to get back there pretty soon. And uh New Orleans is probably like single most favorite city in the U.S. is New Orleans. That's the um, one place I haven't been to. <laughs> oh, and you like to eat, so oh my god! So I'm sure I would like oh, it there. Oh my gosh, you would just die. It's just so much, and it's one of those places. When I try and eat their food outside of New Orleans, it's uh-huh. not the same. Uh-huh. It just it's usually disappointing. So we've gone there. I've been there like at least five, six times, and wow. one of the times my husband and I drove there. And people are like, oh, why are you going to New Orleans? And I was like, oh, to eat. Yeah, exactly. Like, we literally drove there. <laughs> what else is there? <laughs> yeah, spent the weekend and just ate. We've been to, like, the Jazz Fest there. I've been there for New Year's. It's, I love it. I definitely love it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to try and introduce people to places, both um, international destinations and then in the U.S. You know, I've been to most of the big cities, um, my husband's from Chicago, so we've been there several times. And I'm really sad, obviously, about what's going on in New York with, you know, yes. going up outside of there and having so many friends and family in the area. So, um, Scary yeah, time. <laughs> it is. My brother and my nieces and my cousins live in Connecticut. And I have a lot of friends and, you know, New York, New Jersey area. So uh, just hoping things get better soon. So. I'm glad you, you, you. I'm glad you mentioned that because my next thing to you was, you know, to talk about a little bit about coronavirus. And uh, sure. before we we talk about that, I have to also mention that you are fresh off your CNN appearance. Ah! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was fantastic. You know, oh. your authority on. I, I remember your blog. Um, not too. Well, a couple of years ago now, the Zika virus. Yes, so, I did write about that also. Yeah. Also managed to tell everybody, not just the travels, but also health. You know, yes. how do you travel safely during virus, yes. and during, you know, outbreak of this. So it's a very resourceful, it's a, it's a site full of plenty of resources uh. for the travel. Thank so, you. Yeah. No, I, it, it was fantastic. And I'm glad you, you had a chance to do that. So I was really like, ooh, I'm glad she remembers her friends. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. When those when my two worlds collide, it's always yeah. interesting. I um, <laughs> actually spoke at the Audacity Fest by Nomadis in September, and I did two panels. The first one I did was on culinary travel. So I mm-hmm. moderated uh, a psalm, a chef, and um, – food entrepreneurs. And so that was great. And then later in the day, I I was on a panel with some fellow doctors and we spoke about medical emergencies and um, 
tour, medical tourism and yeah. how to like get health, you know, do all your stuff to stay healthy while you go away, especially me. I spoke about kids. So yeah, there are definitely times where both of my worlds collide and collide. this was one of them. Yes. And it, it was amazing because I did my, I did a Facebook live about it early February before mm-hmm. people really knew a whole lot about it. And yeah. so that video got shared thousands of times. And then wow. I wrote the blog post and I remember posting it that day, like, okay, here is, you know, information, blah, blah, blah. And it went viral and crashed my site. <laughs> so my site was down for over a day. I forget. I think it was like 70,000 views in a day wow. or something. It was, and people were telling me they really enjoyed it and shared it because yeah. it was relatable. Like I made it in, you know, plain English that anybody reading could understand and just broke it down. Um, and so I felt really good about that, that I was able to like educate people on it in a sensible way. And then, um, yeah, I've tried to keep it updated. Things, as you know, change so quickly, so quickly, uh, so <laughs> quickly. So, but I've definitely tried to still keep up with, um, educating people about it. The, the virus is not, we've seen coronaviruses in the past, obviously, mm-hmm. like the first SARS was coronavirus, MERS was coronavirus. But this one is proving to be very different and very difficult exactly. and, you know, hard to predict. So even here in the U.S., of course, New York has been the epicenter for it. Yeah. Um, but they're around the country. They're seeing younger people affected, even people in their 30s and 40s having strokes from it, mm-hmm. um, you know, kidney failure, just so many different things. And I think, you know, in terms of the shutdown, I, I, I commend people who really did observe it because I think that made a difference in you know, slowing down the spread of the virus Um, and giving us more time to learn and research what it is and what treatments you can use. And all of that has been helpful um, in terms of all the physician groups I'm in. So in Atlanta, we never became, we never got over capacity, Mm -hmm. but there were areas in the States like Albany, Georgia had an outbreak after two funerals there. And so um, there's just been these pockets all around Georgia. But thank goodness in Atlanta, we've been able to handle the amount of patients that we're seeing here. So um, I think we have to give it more time, the scientists more time to figure out. And work. they're working on a vaccine. And unfortunately, I think that means slowing down travel for most people this year, only because they're even finding that even if you develop antibodies after having it, you may not be immune from getting it again. Exactly. And which is, yeah. which is the part that it makes it hard for me to understand why people still choose to really, you know, ignore the experts really. Right. From day one, it's like, listen to right. the experts. Right. I mean, what you, <laughs> I mean, yeah. well, like, words and, and sentences that my mom used to say, but I, I, I just will not share them because it's like, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what right. did you graduate from and what makes you think you know better than me? You know, it's like right. what you said, we're trying to stop the, the, you know, from, from it becoming a catastrophe. You really exactly. need to not overwhelm the system and they right. just don't get it. And I don't understand what guns have to do with it. I don't understand. I know. Me neither. Everything else, you know, it just makes, it makes no sense. Uh, I think people want to believe what fits their lifestyle and agenda. Yes. And so if they don't want to have to stay home, then they will find the one or two people out there saying that, no, you don't need to stay yeah. home. It's, you know, <laughs> you'll be fine. You, you know, exactly. you're young, you'll be healthy, you'll be fine. So people will find that. And it's shocking because most people are on social media. And I would think most people now know someone who has been affected by it yeah. or unfortunately passed away from it. You know, exactly. these stories that you read that are just horrific of even the people who survived, what it's like, like what they exactly. went through. I, I get confused that a people still think it's fake or being made into a big deal. And I tell people as a healthcare provider, I mean, I was in medical school um, during the right after, like it wasn't the AIDS epidemic when I was in, but it was still fairly new in terms of mm-hmm. HIV. And yes. I remember seeing patients with HIV that had tuberculosis, had all types of stuff. Um, you know, and the fear back then was like getting stuck by a needle, you know, exactly. with someone. Yeah. But I went through that fine. I've been through, you know, the swine flu, Ebola, all those things as a as a medical professional. Nothing scares me like this virus has scared me because yeah. it's so highly contagious and because so many healthcare workers have died 
even the ones that have had all proper protection. And so when people even say things like, oh, well, it's like the flu. It's like, no, you don't see doctors and nurses dropping dead from the flu. Because we have the vaccine, we have medications for it, but this is new. And so it's so contagious and so many people that are just taking care of other people are dying that it's, um, there was a meme that my friend was circulating and she said, if doctors are scared, you should be scared. Definitely. And, you should be terrified. And, yeah. But at, at least be terrified enough to at least just stay home, you know, like exactly. not have and big I, gatherings and yeah. I know it's, it's hard for people to like separate, you know, the fact from the fiction, especially yeah. when you hear your leaders telling you things uh, that you, know, you maybe want to hear, you know, but, but how do you educate people and say listen to the experts i mean you yeah. say it you read it but it's right. like they just still choose to ignore it they choose to ignore it or try the crazy remedies that crazy people yeah, may yeah. be suggesting that yeah, i saw something like uh, did you know that covid written upside down is like 91 and then so if you read sam 91 then you will not Stop get the virus it. Yes. No, I haven't yes. seen that. Oh, <gasps> oh boy. So, so there was some lady who is a, a priest, so God knows whatever, you know, send me like $91 because of stamp 91 and they will pray over you and all these things. And I'm like, wow. and people actually will believe that and oh, they will send in money. Gosh. And, you know, there's the people that say, you know, tonic water will cure you. you know? Right. <laughs> Well, you know, there was even a doctor, sadly, I forget what state this was, that he was selling these coronavirus uh, bo- survival boxes or health oh, boxes. Oh, no. What was and it? it was like, it was thousands of dollars and it was just like um, disinfectant <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Candle. Some disinfectant wipes. <laughs> he threw in some vitamins in there. And I think he did have like one of the antibiotics and I, he got shut down. Thank God. Oh, thank um, God. Yeah, because again, people hear these things. They're like, "Oh, Clorox, I can drink that, and that'll get rid of it." And yeah. people will go and you know, I have family members that are just like social media followers that are constantly sending me articles or videos <laughs> that again, <laughs> oh my gosh, and I'm like, "No, please, these these people are on their own self agenda. Like they're not thinking about other people." And yeah, so it's 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 even what you would consider like educated people that see yes. or hear these things and say, Oh, well, I wonder if that's the way I should look at it. <laughs> oh boy. I'm like, if you follow any maybe like international news, you read exactly. I mean, how do you not know that this has happened in other places and that it could happen here. You know? Yeah. Um, well, you know, we're, we're, we're too good for that. It cannot happen here. You know, know that's what the know. Know. I'm not oh. sure where that, sense of entitlement comes from but exactly. that seems to be <laughs> that yes. seems to be what the belief but the oh. you know the overriding thing is you've got to start listening to experts and take yes. their advice and just admit that you're not and don't say that prayers will cure you or you're washed right. in the blood of God or whatever, you know, because God is like, you damn idiot. He's telling you. Right. He's telling you. This. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because right. that's what's happening with the churches here. Like they wouldn't shut down and they said, yeah. you know, they were fine because it was church. And a couple of the outbreaks in the U.S. have been from people going to synagogue or going to church. And so yeah. I'm like. Okay, you do realize that you can't really social distance in most of those churches. Exactly. You Ugh. know, so I I do my best and I, I try if I see things on social media that are inaccurate to try and, um, you know, correct people and not be condescending or anything, but just, yeah. and that's what I tell people, if you're not sure, then yes, ask a, a medical professional so that they can give you a real answer before you start. Thank goodness I've had people send me stuff that they were going to share on social media but they asked me first, what do you oh think of God, this? Really? Yes. Yeah, because there's and nothing so, worse than spreading misinformation. Exactly, exactly. And so I've been, I'll just tell them, nope, nope, nope. This, there's no science behind this. Don't, <laughs> don't share this. Don't post this, please. You know, but I think people are getting antsy. They want to get back out. They want to go back to their jobs. They want to, you know, kind of live their life. But at the yeah. same time, I don't have the feeling this is going anywhere. And so people have to kind of get used to, I think, a new normal. 
things exactly. that we just wouldn't normally do, like the mask and, you know, plexiglass dividers in the grocery store or on the plane. I think it's going to change so much of how we, you know, how our everyday lives are. Because um, they say, I mean, I don't, they don't think it's going away over the summer or even by the fall. Mm-hmm. Um, and so maybe by next year, if there's a vaccine available or by then better treatments, then, yeah. you know, I think things can maybe go back a bit into normalcy next year. But yeah, it's been sad. I myself canceled three trips so far that I was really looking forward to. Um, I was going to South America for the first time to Brazil. Mm, that would have been nice. Eh? Yeah, I've never been anywhere. I can't believe I've never been anywhere in South America. And so I Me finally, neither. But I haven't really. Ah! I want to have a good steak in Argentina. Though. That's pretty much it. I don't yeah. want to be anywhere near Latin America, South America. I just haven't had the urge to go. Right, right. Uh, I've yeah. always wanted to go to Brazil and Argentina. And I actually almost booked Argentina last year. And I forgot what happened. But yeah, I I would like to at least just go and see, you know, like I said earlier, like see these things in person that I've always wanted to see. Yeah. But no, it has to definitely wait. My mom, even though she traveled all the time, she also was very optimistic when, say, something had to be canceled. Like I remember they were going to Hawaii and there was a big storm or hurricane or something. So that trip mm-hmm. got canceled. She was going to somewhere in the Middle East and then they had the embassy bombing. Oh, no, yeah, she didn't for that. Yeah. And so she would always say to me, like, Nadine, Greece isn't going anywhere. Like, you know, exactly. Rome's not going anywhere. Those places have been around for thousands and thousands of years. Yep. So, you know, tell, trying to convince people that their health is the priority and that these places can wait and you will get to travel again when it's safe. Um, granted, I know for people who travel full time and depend on that for their income, yeah. Yeah. then it's much tougher to, for them to accept uh, what's going on but you know the the last thing you want is to even be asymptomatic you know you're young you're healthy you're thinking oh I'll get even if I get it I'll be fine yeah. but you can spread it to people in your life that have chronic illnesses or who are elderly and not even know it because you may not exactly. have the symptoms and so I also stress that to people mm-hmm. um, you know if you live with your grandparents or you know they will be will be at risk if you stop social distancing and start hanging out with a lot of people. <laughs> then you can true. bring it home. <laughs> yeah, so there's always, a lot of things that have to change. <laughs> uh, I always say death comes. I don't really need to be chasing after it. To like, <laughs> you know, it's gonna come That's anyway. a good one. I have not heard that. I like that. I mean, it's, <laughs> I made that, it up. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, no that's a good way to look at it. Thanks. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that's a good way to look at it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like you to tell me, you know, as a last thing, I know I told you it was going to be a half an hour, but my last thing I'm going to ask you is oh, uh, sure. you, you're you now part of the Oprah empire as an ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> the Oprah empire. I love it. <laughs> I need some steak in the... Yeah. Oprah Empire, <laughs> some songs <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah, it's been, I, yeah, I became a brand ambassador for the Oprah magazine in January. And I applied last year just because I've always loved the magazine. Of course, love Oprah. And I just love that they spread positivity, and especially for women. Um, yeah. And so, so far, it's been great. I've mostly been getting to know the other brand ambassadors. Some have been there, you know, for years and years before. Uh, the other the few people joined this year so it's been great so far I mean I was featured in um, their magazine newsletter was that last week so that was like my first like O magazine feature Uh, so that was pretty exciting a couple of the brand ambassadors are actually in the 20th anniversary edition that's out now for Oprah magazine so yeah we get to work with a lot of the um, vendors and uh, brands that they work with um and prior so i went on the oprah girls getaway cruise last year january and that's Uh what kind of prompted me to apply because i the brand ambassadors did a lot on that cruise um and so they've done a couple other cruises also so yeah it's a great opportunity it's a very diverse group of uh as far as i know now it's all women there used to be a man but it's very diverse in terms of age race um you know most people are in the states but I really am impressed with what they're doing so far. So yeah, I'm looking forward to see what other opportunities come up this year, but 
just seeing my name and the magazine newsletter, I got excited. <laughs> like, yay! Well, you I mean, congratulations, that's a big deal, you know? Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I, um, there's nothing wrong with being associated with a multi-billionaire. Ah! Woman, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. A force of nature. That's what she yeah, is. <laughs> she is. And, you know, when I was on the cruise, I kept trying to meet her because she actually was out, both her and Gail, I did meet Gail. Um, but both her and Gail were out and about on the cruise. People saw them in the restaurants, the gym, the spa. And literally she walked past me like twice, but I didn't get to like talk to her, you know, like mm-hmm. stop and talk to her like some other people did, but she really made herself accessible. They had a pajama party one night and she brought out the shot wow. <laughs> for the party. <laughs> so, so people of course are swarming around her and we're all hoping she would do another one soon, but now with, you know, COVID and, yeah. That's another thing. I don't know when I'm getting on a cruise ship. Again, I know. So. We canceled that cruise for June. It's like, thank oh. you, but no. <laughs> now, was that a regular cruise or like river cruises? Because I know those are popular. No, right regular there. cruise. Okay. My, my okay. mother-in-law wanted her 70th birthday on oh. a cruise. And she was the one that said, you know what? No. She lives in Rome. She's like, no, thanks. I'm oh, already, man. I've already it's had enough of this. You know, we don't right. want to be on a cruise then. So... I know it's just, and I love, love to cruise. And like I said, we went on one in January and when we got off is when we found out that was the very start of it kind of where um, there was that cruise ship in Rome, actually, I guess that they were afraid it it turns out it didn't have any patients with it, but that was like the start of all of that. And I was like, whew. We barely made it. <laughs> Dutch one there. <laughs> Dutch one, yeah. I was wondering if the river cruises were as a, were you know would be as affected, but um, that because I would love to do one of those at some point. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. So, but we'll have to just play it as you were saying, go with the flow to play it by air in terms of when we can all travel again. But it should definitely be when it's safe and the airlines and cruise ships have things in better order and control. <laughs> Exactly. We get on. <laughs> exactly. Oh, <laughs> Let yeah. us try it out first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I read, was it last week? Like, there's still like 9,000 passengers at sea. Still stuck everywhere. Yeah, there's still. Oh, my God. Not only that, but there are a lot of employees that are still stuck on the cruises where, oh. you know, their countries have shut down, so they can't send them anywhere. And the worst part is, like, a lot of the cruise ships are not paying them if their contract is up so oh not only gosh. are you stuck on the ship but you can't Ugh. even get paid i mean it's just it's a mess oh my it's gosh. a mess i did not know about that yeah, part. yeah because really i know terrible. they spend like six months at a time yes. on the cruise ships yeah oh, wow yeah i know it's just ugh. Ugh, I that is know. tough it's, yeah so when I hear people whining and moaning about, look, I can't do this, exactly. I can't do this, like, shut up. <laughs> right. Know? It could always be worse. You know? Yes. No, and I feel the same way. I'm so, I know I'm blessed and I'm so grateful, even if I can't go anywhere, to just be yeah. healthy and, and at home. Exactly. Um, and I still, you know, go to work, so that hasn't changed for me. But, yeah, I know. I mean, there's a lot of things I think people are – you know, like the nail salons opened yes. up here in Atlanta. There was lines. People were, there was lines yeah, that's of very people. essential, isn't it? <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Bowling alleys and movie theaters. I'm like, how are any of those essential businesses? And why would you go right now? To I that? know. Like, so it's, you know, people are, are stubborn and they're resistant. And you just hope that, you know, I it, right now I am hoping they prove us wrong here in Georgia and that we don't see another spike or surge or you know, I'm hoping they prove us wrong, but it's going to be interesting to see in the next two weeks exactly. what happens here, you know. So, but yeah, it was great talking to you, though. You too. Thank you so much for being on here. You're and, welcome. you know, I, I so enjoyed it. And I'm finally, I'm so glad that we finally got to speak you know i know because we haven't met yet which is just not right we have to be in person oh all right we'll have a a a trip to like new orleans or something you can show me all your favorite hunts there there (laughs) you go and i actually really i'm trying to get to an international travel conference um i guess it would be next year but i definitely want to come abroad to check out what that's like over there Great. So yeah, we'll hopefully we will come for you. <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, be safe there in Spain. Thank you, you too. Thanks a lot, Dr. Nadine. Oh, we'll you're welcome. You Thank you. <laughs>
everyone. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one.